All right, welcome to the channel. My name is James and today I'm gonna to walk you through how I paint pale skin. We'll be using some basic color theory and underpainting to create some realistic detail and information within the skin, so let's get into it. And this is what you clicked on the video for. We're gonna be painting up some pale skin looking to integrate a lot of different colors and undertones within the flesh. Now in this instance, I've used a strong directional light, but if you don't wanna go down that route, just apply these steps all over the model. So you'll need the following paints. You'll need Dwarf Skin, Bugman's Glow, Moon Red Flesh, Plague Green, Velvet Red, Gloomy Violet, and Titanium White. All the paints will be listed below in the description along with the Games Workshop equivalents. Starting off from the Zenithal Prime where I use black as my base and then spread grey from the direction of my light, I'm applying the Dwarf Skin Vallejo Contrast Paint. This is purely to establish a warm base for the skin. We're now going to start blocking in the various shapes and volumes across the model using some Bugman's Glow. So we're keeping it really loose at the start. I'm treating them as very large volumes and not worried about the individual muscle bellies just yet. In those really dark areas where the undercoat was effectively black, I'm just going to feather the Bugman's Glow into those areas just to help soften out the transitions. Now taking a mix of roughly 50-50 Bugman's Glow to Moon Red Flesh, we're just going to start again blocking in those big volumes and blocking in the light. Don't be afraid to place this higher value colour in the recesses between the muscles if they're facing in the direction of the light. Remember that your skin is translucent so the light's going to enter in, bounce around and you're going to have these softer transitions and blends between the different colours. So you generally won't have these deep, dark separating lines between the muscle bellies. We're going to be using light to help distinguish and separate the muscles while still creating those soft transitions. So again, towards the rear of the model, I'm just feathering this color out, softening the transitions towards those shadows and those darker sections. Now with the Moon Red Flesh dominant mix, we're going to come back in and help define some of those volumes a wee bit more. So we're just blocking in a lot of the shapes, not worried about creating like too much definition or worrying about the striations just yet. We're just again blocking in the various shapes, creating that light, creating that detail and information across the model. I've been using an Artist Opus Series S size 0 for the entirety of this video, but if you're more comfortable using a smaller brush or a bigger brush, by all means, use whatever you prefer. Now when it comes to the face, we're going to focus on the forehead, the cheekbones, the nose, the chin and jawline. Those are all predominant shapes and spaces within the face that you need to draw attention to to help define the structure. So now for the fun part, we're going to come in with some contrast paints. We're starting off with some play green and we're going to use that to help redefine some of the shadows and create some more interest across the model. Good thing about using green is it helps cancel out some of those warmer reds within the flesh tone and helps desaturate those colors. It can also be used to give the impression of veins and additional detail across the model. So do put it into the back of the hands, parts of the neck and generally areas that you see green on your skin. And with the Velvet Red, you want to apply that to various areas across the model where you might have scarring, any open wounds, anywhere where you may have inflammation or damage to the skin. Also into the back of the elbows and fingertips, always a good spot for some red. And around all the vital organs where there's going to be a lot of blood. Also, if our guy's quite muscular, you can add it around, you know, his larger muscle bellies to give that impression that he's got a bit of a pump going while he's in combat. When it comes to the face, you want to get around the cheeks, around the nose, and the areas that generally blush or would get red whenever you're like embarrassed or fatigued. Then coming in with a bit of gloomy violet and kind of just throwing that around the model just to add some variation and discoloration to parts of the skin, maybe to imply some bruising, some more damage, or it could just be to add some additional coloration. So now we have all of our underpainting done, we've established the various shapes across the model and we've created a lot of color variation across the skin which makes it a lot more interesting. So now we're going to take a mix of Bugman's Glow, Moon Red Flesh and Dwarf Skin. The reason we're adding the Dwarf Skin into the mix is it helps add some warmth into the colours and also it helps to maintain the transparency. Now that we've established all of that underpainting and all of that additional information within the skin, we want to try and preserve it by using transparent layers to build up the rest of the detail. So you can see I'm back to blocking in the muscle bellies, I'm starting to add in some striations and some additional details within the model and any areas that are perpendicular or facing the light source, I'm ensuring that I'm 
applying this color into those areas. Like I said earlier, we're gonna be using light to help define these volumes and to create the separation within the muscle bellies. So don't try to leave those sections too dark at the minute. So again, whenever it comes to the face, we wanna focus on the head, forehead, cheekbones, nose, chin, and jawline. That'll help to shape the face and add in some more detail. With those underpaintings, you'll see that we get this like variation in the color, almost creating that like five o'clock shadow in certain areas where he's maybe shaved his head or around the jawline. Adding some more moon red flesh into the mix, we're really gonna start to pick out some of the striations and details within each of the muscle bellies. So we're now starting to treat them as separate objects instead of one large volume. And just remember with the position of our model and the position of the light, I wanna focus a lot of that attention around the clavicle, bottom of the traps, and top of the chest. Also into the front of the delts and maybe even the middle of the delts as well. So you can see the paint's still pretty translucent and pretty thin while I'm working across this model. Whenever you apply these colors, they will seem quite bright because they're wet, but once they're dry, they do tone down a wee bit. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to hit that like. It really helps to promote the video and helps the channel grow. And if you're feeling frisky, don't forget to give that subscribe a wee slap and a tickle. You can also drop a comment below to help please the algorithm. And you can see as we start to layer up these colors, we get a lot of variation because of the transparency of the paint. You get some of the underpainting coming through. Some areas appear more opaque than others, which helps to add to the realism and variation within the skin. So we're pretty much back to our moon red flesh dominant mix. There's just a touch of Bugman's glow in here just to tone it down a tiny bit. I'm really gonna start picking out those sharp details within each of the volumes. So around the face again, we're hitting those cheekbones, those lines around the mouth, uh, eyebrows, forehead, nose, chin, all those important details. Keeping the paint thin again so we can preserve that underpainting and those color variations within the skin. Now this guy has a big old scar in the middle of his forehead and you can see I'm just ignoring that for the time being. I'll come back to that at a later point but it's important that you just treat the whole volume as one thing and don't worry too much about each individual detail or each scar across the model whenever you're really defining the muscle bellies and the detail within the skin. So you can see I'm pulling all of that light up towards the top of the muscle belly around the clavicle around the bottom of the trap where the light would interact with these areas, creating those softer transitions. And within the abs, we're just starting to pick out some of the details in this area. The last thing you want is that turtle shell look to the abdominal section of your model. Now repeating this process with pure moon red flesh, again, just focusing on those brighter areas, emphasizing those striations and details within the musculature while trying to keep those transitions soft and smooth where the light is interacting with the skin. And now you can start to see how using these lighter colors creates that separation and definition within the muscle bellies and within the musculature of the model. And again, focusing on those key areas in the face. So now we're gonna add some titanium white to the moon red flesh. This will really boost the value and the opacity of the color. We're gonna use this to really emphasize the main areas of light across the skin and across the muscle bellies. Also to help emphasize that striation pattern across the muscles. Now when you're doing this, you don't want bold, strong lines running through the muscles. You want to make sure that they're integrated, they're soft, but still adding additional detail within the skin. Also try to think about how the muscles are actually stretching or moving across the body and whether or not the striations will actually be visible in those areas. So as you can see with this stance, the chest is really stretched. So you'll be able to see some of the striations across the entirety of the, the chest and into the delts and potentially at the top of the biceps. So it's definitely worth checking out some anatomy diagrams and whatnot whenever you're coming to paint skin, you wanna get that more realistic look rather than that sort of comic book-esque style. 
In the head, we're focusing more around the nose, the cheekbones, eyebrows, and forehead now. We're leaving that sort of five o'clock shadow towards uh, the jaw and towards the chin. Again, creating extra detail and more information from that underpainting that we did earlier. Adding some more titanium white into your mix, use this to highlight up the brightest areas within the muscle bellies, again emphasizing those striations, and be sure to feather out those edges so you get smooth transitions between the different values. Again in the face, really just targeting the cheekbones, the nose and the eyebrows now, really just trying to target the attention around the eyes. And then because this guy's got a big old open wound in the middle of his chest, I'm taking the Vallejo Velvet Red contrast paint and applying that in there. You could also use Blood for the Blood God or your favourite product for this. But with that, the skin's pretty much done. Let's get him on the spinning thing and get a proper look at him. And here he is. You can see how that underpainting has affected certain parts of the face and certain parts of the body, especially with those reds and purples coming through across the musculature and into the face. Those greens are definitely more dominant towards the shadows, into the rib cage, and underneath the armpits, helping to desaturate those colors and add some more information. So these underpaintings tend to be pretty subtle towards the end, and that's how you know you've done it right. This creates a more realistic and lifelike look to your skin, and it generally looks more pleasing to the eye. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for future videos, please drop them below in the comments. And if you wanna show me what you've been working on, head on over to the Discord and drop some pics into the whips or the completed projects. I'd love to see what you've been painting. If you'd like to get some personalized coaching and tuition, head on over to the Patreon and check out the available packages. There'll be something there to suit everybody. All links can be found below in the description. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you at the next one.